The title of this is The Role of Alpha Lipoic Acid in Infertility. So the first question is, what is alpha lipoic acid? So alpha lipoic acid is a naturally occurring antioxidant, and it's found in all sorts of foods, including things like spinach and broccoli and liver, um, for those of you that consider that liver is a food. And uh, it can be very commonly found. Um, and this is up there with things like the fish oils in terms of its antioxidant capacity. Um, and some of its sourcing as well. So it's been shown to have quite a few different health benefits in a variety of different areas, uh, one of which appears to have to do with infertility. Some of them also include things like insulin control and sensitization. Uh, they've had studies showing that you can actually reduce your weight by taking alpha lipoic acid. And there are many studies showing that it demonstrates a significant reduction in inflammation throughout the body. Uh, finally, in terms of fertility itself, it has been shown to have an impact on sperm parameters, egg quality, and on embryo outcomes. So uh, there is quite a bit of promise that this could be a very beneficial supplement when going through infertility treatment. What's the mechanism of action? Well, it's an antioxidant. So like any antioxidant, the job of ALA is to mop up what's called reactive oxygen species. So not to give any of you nightmares from your high school chemistry class, but if you'll remember that uh, some of the electrons on oxygen can kind of break off, you then get a reactive oxygen species where it's running around trying to find an electron to rebind to itself. And in that process, it does an enormous amount of damage to everything around it. So what you need are antioxidants, which are able to undo the damage or to mop up those reactive oxygen species by binding to them with the extra electrons that they have and preventing them from running around doing all the damage that they do. So ALA works by that same mechanism. Um, in terms of its specific functions, it can reduce oxidative stress in the, um, sorry guys, one second. It can um, reduce oxidative stress and inflammation in the reproductive tract. Um, it can improve insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism, and it can regulate hormone levels, including things like testosterone, which obviously is critical for male infertility and for improving things like sperm production. Uh, may also have an impact on estrogen. That's st uh, still being worked out, so we're not 100% sure. How do you take it? Well, if you're taking it in supplement form, um, there's tons of different supplements. I looked it up and there was like page after page after page of ALA supplements on uh, Google. So um, it can be taken as a pill. It can be taken as a powder. There's tablets, there's capsules, all sorts of different versions of it. Um, the recommended dose varies, but the gist of it is that you should probably be taking somewhere between 600 to 800 milligrams per day. Um, and for males, the typical dose is 600 to 1200 um, taken divided in meals. So uh, that was based on a, an article from Safari Najad um, in uh, 2012. And most of the studies that followed that typically, you know, fell into that 600 to 800 milligram category. Okay, so how does it impact the guys? Well, um, there are obviously critical elements to fertility that come from the male. We're responsible for 50% of infertility. So sperm quality and motility are really important factors in male fertility. If you have poor quality sperm, if you have poor motility, if you have low morphology, you're gonna have a harder time getting pregnant. So ALA is thought to improve sperm quality by reducing the amount of oxidative stress and damage and reducing inflammation in the male reproductive tract. In one study, ALA demonstrated after three months of use that there was a significant improvement in the sperm count, highly significant, a significant improvement in the motility of the sperm and in the morphology, which is the shape of the sperm. And this was a randomized controlled trial with a placebo group. So pretty convincing data that there can be very significant improvements in sperm parameters if you're using the LA, ALA. Another study also found that ALA supplementation for six months 
led to a significant increase in the percentage of sperm with normal morphology compared to placebo. That was a study done by Malecki two years later. Again, highly significant. Your p-values are less than 0.001. So it certainly looks very promising that you can improve sperm parameters with this. And interestingly, I haven't actually seen a lot of male supplements that have this built into it already. So it may be something we start to add on to the ones that we typically use. What about IUI? Well, IUI is where we take the sperm, we wash it, and then we deliver it through the cervix up into the uterus and flush it in by improving the sperm quality, getting rid of a lot of the semen, getting rid of a lot of the dead sperm and some of the abnormal sperm, and then having the sperm kind of put into the equivalent of Red Bull essentially where they're energized and they can swim much better. So that's the basic process. The question is, if you supplement with ALA, do you improve your outcomes? And the answer is, you would think that if you can reduce the amount of oxidative stress and improve the sperm parameters, you should actually see an improvement in the IUI success rate. So sure enough, they had one study where infertile men took the ALA for three months before an IUI. They had a very substantial increase in the pregnancy rate. Now, it's so good, it's actually hard to believe because in general, with the best of outcomes, you're gonna get about a 10 to 15% chance with IUI if you're using pills for the woman to help her make extra eggs, and maybe 20 to 25% if you're using shots. This study is actually saying 32.5% for the um, IUI in the group that took the ALA versus 12.5%. And again, it was significant. So a little hard to understand, but um, still showing quite significant improvement in results. So certainly maybe worthwhile using in the IUI population. What about using it in IVF? Well, IVF is where we make people make eggs. We take the eggs out of the women. We then take the sperm and we individually select the best sperm, or you can just take groupings of sperm and kind of put it in with the egg. And if you're individually selecting, you choose each sperm, you inject it into the egg and you've now fertilized the embryo. That process is called ICSI. So ALA, again, may improve embryo quality and egg quality as well by reducing the oxidative stress and inflammation. So in one study that they did for this, they gave patients ALA, and these were female patients now, so we're out of the guys, and they had a much higher pregnancy rate. So this is very significant. It was 44.6% versus 319 And on top of that, they had a huge increase in the live birth rate, which is, as you all know, the holy grail of what we look for when we're trying to see if something is efficacious or not for fertility. So 38.2% versus 24.5%, again, very highly significant. So these would be very, very important things to look at for us because this seems to suggest that this could actually be a tremendous advantage for patients taking it compared to those who are not. In another study that I didn't put on here, they also showed an improvement in the number of eggs that were not degenerated and the number of eggs that were mature. There are, on the other hand, other studies that said that the there was no difference in the quality or the maturity of the egg. So hard to know on that part, but this particular study is showing live birth data and clinical pregnancy rate data, which is very, very significant and interesting to look at. What about in the lab? Well, even in the lab, there may be some benefits. So adding this stuff to the culture media that we grow the embryos in actually improved the embryo quality and reduced miscarriage rates and got better quality blastocysts. So it may be good to add even into the culture media. Some culture media already have this, some do not. We're actually exploring the potential for adding it to our culture media. So that's something that we're looking at right now. What are the other benefits of using ALA? Well, it's not just for fertility. It's actually great for your skin health and for reducing the signs of aging. So uh, whether you're male or female, if you're concerned about uh, aging prematurely or, or looking old, any older than you already are, um, then this might be helpful for you. It can actually improve and rejuvenate skin tissue. And there's quite a number of studies that show that it can be beneficial. 
Um, for diabetics, it's actually been proven to reduce peripheral neuropathy where they get nerve damage um, in the uh, kind of distal or, or distant parts of their body, so fingertips and toes and things like that. And that nerve damage can lead to injuries which go um, kind of unnoticed because you don't feel them as much. And that's when people start losing limbs or, or body parts because they get damaged, they don't recognize the blood supply is terrible, it can't heal properly, and then nothing's being done about it and it goes on to kind of fester essentially and become a problem. Um, and then finally, there may be some brain uh, benefits to using this as well. A little bit more controversial, but there are some studies that show that it can improve your cognitive function and memory if you're older. Now, I also saw studies that said there was no difference but overall, it appears that there may be an opportunity here to improve your overall well-being by being on this ALA. So definitely has a lot of benefits in fertility from what we can tell. And then outside of fertility, there may also be some benefits for you. What about the limitations and the side effects? Well, obviously, there are some potential side effects to consider. Some studies have shown that there are no benefits, and I said that to you earlier. So there are two referenced here where they showed there was no difference in sperm parameters or fertility outcomes in men. Um, and one was more recent, it was in 2016. But overall, the studies are suggesting that there is a benefit. The other thing is that it can cause some GI upset and skin rashes. And in some people, it's so potent as far as the sugar control is concerned, it can actually drop your sugar and get you to go a little bit lower than you're supposed to. Now, this is a very old study. It's from 1997, but it is possible that there could be side effects and that has to be considered when you're taking any medication. <clears throat> well, is there a way to get this just by eating your diet? We all know everybody wants everything natural. Loads of people don't want to have to take something in that um, is essentially a medication um, form. They want to get it out of their diet or they want to, you know, get it off of a tree or whatever from a plant. So there are loads of foods that are very rich in ALA. So flaxseed oil has five grams per tablespoon. Chia seeds have 2.5 grams per tablespoon. Hemp seeds, 0 0.9 grams per ounce. Edamame beans, uh, half a gram per cup. Um, a whole avocado gets you um, 0.22 grams or 220 milligrams. And uh, even a measly cup of oatmeal will get you 42 um, milligrams. Uh, worth of it. So you're going to be far off the mark of the 600 to 800 that you need, but you can easily get it by just adding some flaxseed to your cereal in the morning. And that can be very, very beneficial. Um, so that, that might be something that people want to consider. Okay, so with any supplement that you're using, it's critical that you consider speaking to your physician because this is not for everybody. There are some studies that have shown that it can actually um, make your sugar go lower. As I mentioned, um, there are concerns about kidney function and diabetics. So there are things that need to be considered. Never take anything without discussing it with your physician, okay? So it's important to consult with a healthcare provider before taking any supplements, including the ALA. And it can interact with other medications and supplements. And we don't fully know about the dose and duration, although I saw one study that said, don't take it for more than four years, but that seems like an awfully long time. I'm sure none of you are worried about it after that. Okay, what about future, uh, or sorry, summary of key findings? So it may be beneficial in male and female infertility, including improving sperm, egg, and embryo parameters and fertility outcomes. So this is big news. We don't see natural stuff that often with this kind of supported data. So thank you to my um, loving, loving uh, followers out there who uh, brought this to my attention because it was not on my radar at all. Um, it may also have benefits in the lab where you get less degraded eggs, you get less immature eggs, and you get better embryo quality. More research is needed to know the dosing, the timing, how long should you be using it for, when should it be started, and when should it be stopped. And then, of course, always the potential side effects and risks. What about future research? So we need to do some research now to figure out where the optimal dose and timing of ALA supplementation is in male infertility and IVF and IUI and, and female infertility. That really started around 2022. So I think there are some people working on it. 
Where are we headed? Well, we need to know, are there any side effects to supplementation? And what about those interactions with other medications? So critical for us to understand this as more people start to adopt it, what could potentially happen to them and, and what sort of things could they experience? <clears throat> and there was a whole slew of references that we used to create this, and those are the references there. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to stop the screen share now, and uh, we will happily take your questions. <clears throat>